Hello guys, we're about one here, and today I am doing Konami Fix the ban list. And again, and seeing as it's only the second of the second day of the year, Happy New Year, still guys. I know it's not the first day of the year, but Happy New Year. But nonetheless, um, yeah, we're doing Konami Fix the ban list now. For you guys who don't know what Konami Fix the ban list is, Konami Fix the ban list is a segment on my channel where I talk about cards, de cards that I think that should be limited, semi-limited, banned, unlimited, or anything like that. Just because it's my thing. I like to talk about what Konami should do because I'm usually right. Because they're idiots. Because they can't fix the damn ban list. Always making those big, big, big mistakes. But yeah, guys, today I'm going to be talking about a card that enables another card to be able to use in pretty much any deck that can use war monsters. You may have guessed it, and it is Bahamut Shark. Now, me personally, I think Bahamut Shark should be limited, but most people think it should be banned. Now, the reason I don't think it should be banned to begin with is because it's not banned worthy. Like, it's a good card being able to summon a Treat Toad, but in general, it's not a card really banned worthy. Because when you think about it, the card is a very good card, yes. Being able to summon any, any rank 3 or lower water monster or... Aqua Monster from your extra deck is a very good effect, but the card is not band worthy. Now, now before I get now before you start getting on my case why it's not band worthy, you've got to think about it like this. Now, any deck that's playing a Bahamut Shark Tree Toad is playing at least two Bahamut Sharks. If you're playing any less than two Bahamut Sharks, it's not that good a card because you'll only be able to summon the Tree to Toad once. Once is your one option is your only option for it, because they because anyone can get over a treat toad easy if you get rid of the one Bahamut shark. Now, if you limit this card instead, then they will only have the one Bahamut shark, and if you get around that one Bahamut shark, half of their entire deck, like the entire meaning of their deck, is gone. Cause stuff like uh, treat toad heroes, for instance. That deck plays two Bahamut Shark. Now it plays two Bahamut Shark because a Bahamut Shark is a very easy card to get around. They usually end up summoning turn one, and if you limit, and if they only have that one, then they can only make one Tree Toad. Now, sure, the Tree Toad isn't the easiest thing to get over unless you can say Utopia the Lightning your way over it, or right, or just bait it out. But if you only have the one Bahamut Shark, and you're able to clear that one Bahamut Shark very easily, which is very simple in this game, like, it's not going to be hard to clear a Bahamut Shark with all the stuff we have. Like, we have Lightning, we have Castell, we have Diamond Direwolf, we have Raigekis, we have Dark Holes, we have Kaiju Slumbers, we have Kaijus in general. It's not going to be a hard task to get rid of Bahamut Shark. So when you're thinking about it, why, is, why are people saying this card should be banned? It's not banned worthy. Purely because the card isn't the greatest thing ever. The reason it's good is because it can summon Tree Toad. And if you limit the card, it cannot summon Tree Toad as well. So, well, it can't summon it multiple times unless the card survives a turn, which is very unlikely in this game. So, when you're thinking about it, why is Bahamut Shark... Think Why are people saying Bahamut Shark should be banned when, sure, Tree Toad's an amazing card, you can summon it off Bahamut Shark... If the card is very easy to get around, like Bahamut Shark in general, oh, I can veil this away, it's no problem. Oh, I can Kaiju it away. Oh, I can uh, Max C to gain additional pluses. I can Ghost Ogre it away so they can't summon another one. Um, like, there's tons of ways around a Bahamut Shark, like, no kidding. Like, it's a very easy card to get around in general, so there's not really any point to the card being a free. Like, I mean, there's no really point to banning the card. Because with decks like Treat Toad Heroes, the deck would run two. Because the deck can make two Treat Toad, Bahamut Shark, two, two Bahamut, two Treat Toad for turn one. But if you limit that, if you limit them to only being able to summon one Bahamut Shark, then they cannot make it as strong of a board. Which is a very good thing. Because if you can limit their options to summon a big board, then you're limiting their plays to an ex a very big extent. Which is an amazing thing as well, because if you if they're not able to summon those massive, massive boards, 
that they always want to summon, then they're not going to be in a very good position. So, with the one Bahamut Shark, sure, they can still summon Tree Toad, but it's not as stupid as it once was. Meaning they have to limit their options of Tree Toad. They're not going to be focused on always summoning the Tree Toad because they may want to save it for late game. And even if they can still make a, a Dark Lore one Bahamut, one Tree Toad, they won't be able to get that Tree Toad back if the Bahamut Shark is removed, which is going to be very easy for most decks next format as well, because we're going to have a lot of Kaiju decks running, a lot of decks that main a Kaiju engine running around because the Zodiac deck and the Adolon deck and so all those different decks. So it really does make sense for bah Bahamut Shark not to be banned, because if you limit it, it solves the problem and enables a deck to still survive. And also, if you really want to hit some, stop something from Tree Toad, then hit Tree Toad itself to one. But that's that's another video for another time. But Bahamut Shark is not a banned worthy card. It's a limit worthy card, yes, but it's not a banned worthy card. Now, another reason why I think it should be limited is because sh there's other decks that can use it and utilize it later on, such as Fluffles. Now, Fluffles, I know, I know, they're, they're, they're a stupid deck in general, but if you give them Bahamut Shark, then they have another combo to kind of increase their value, and another way to increase their value is by giving, keeping them with their support. Like, Fluffles are getting a pre-preparation of rights and new, two new fusions... A penguin, a squid. They're getting a lot of stuff. And if you keep one Bahamut Shark around, it means the deck's going to have a lot of more plays to do have. And a lot more interest in the world. Because Bahamut Shark, is an, Bahamut Shark is one of the reasons why the deck could be really good. Like, it's a really great deck, but... If you give it, keep it with it, Bahamut Shark up there, then it's going to keep going in, up in potential. Which is another good thing. Because Fluffles... If we got Tiger right away, it would have been a great deck. But what, we didn't really get that great deck. Well, well the, you Americans did, whoever, whichever Americans are watching this. Um, it didn't do very well. Because we didn't have Tiger. But... If we had Tiger, it would do amazing. But with Bahamut Shark, they, they will have a way to be amazing here in the UK as well. Which I find to be really good as well. Because just giving other decks like that the way to ways to summon them is just great things in general another thing mermails mermails are an ftk deck but with tree toad it gives them another spin to it so they don't need to be always focused on the ftks they can be able to make tree toad and stall the game a little and changing their playability a bit sure they will still be pretty focused on the ftk factor but they won't be completely focused on it which is a thing that is good as well keeping old decks in search collation is always good because it keeps old players in the game uh another thing that could be done is like with Norden. Norden is a big problem as well by limiting instant fusion or banning Norden. that's another thing but if you limit the if you keep if you still limit the bahamut shark with banning the Norden, then the problem is gone completely because those decks will still be able to use their nor their debt the bahamut shark and not have to care so there are many reasons for Bahamut Shark not needing to be banned, and better yet, just to limit it. It does slow down the big broken boards. It does stop the. It does help other decks out that need the help, and it does really slow down those unbreakable boards. Like I said a moment ago, like the card isn't ban worthy. It is limit worthy because of being able to summon Trito, but it just gives rank four decks that can use water monsters another edge that most decks have, and then they don't. But, yeah, guys, that's just my personal opinion. I know I rambled on quite a bit in this video. It's nearly on eight min nine minutes. Um, I hope you did enjoy this video, though. I hope you can agree with me or see my point. Um, I hope you can. T I hope you enjoyed it. I just hope you give me your opinions as well. So just tell me in the comment section below. Uh, we're in the new year of 2017. You never know what could happen, but... Yeah, guys, tell me what you think of this video. Tell me if you think Bahamut Shark is limit-worthy, band-worthy. Tell me what you think in the comment section below. And, yeah, guys, uh, like, comment, subscribe. Press the bell button because of Konami makes you double subscribe. And, hello, 2017. We have entered your second day.